everyone. Katie joining you today with Shared Legacy Farms. I'm just going to quick take a second to this, since this is a live video and see if I'm able to watch it from my phone from this page so that way I'll be able to answer any questions that you guys have live while we do this. Alright, so my name is Katie. I am the CSA coach with Shared Legacy Farm. So throughout the season with our CSA group, I do a lot, a, a lot of tutorials with all the vegetables that we have to offer in our boxes to our customers. So today's tutorial is on winter squash. And we've got a large variety of different types of winter squashes to work with. We've got three here today, but there's definitely a lot others that we a lot of others that we can kind of talk about as we go through this. So winter squashes are like our butternut squash, like this guy here. Sometimes you might find one that's a little bit more plump like this. Sometimes they're longer and skinnier. Um, squashes like our acorn squash or a celebration squash also look similar to something like this. We've got a delicata squash, pumpkin, gourds. Those are all considered different types of winter squashes, although they are not edible like these. There are a pump, there is a pumpkin pie pumpkin that is obviously edible, but more of a field pumpkin. That would be one that you would use just for carving, but you can eat the seeds. And then those gourds that you see that a lot of people use for decorations, those aren't necessarily meant to um, be consumed. So we've got a large variety of different types of winter squash. They're pretty much all interchangeable, and we'll talk about that, except for spaghetti squash. So spaghetti squash, we actually have a separate tutorial on, and I will post the link to that in the comments in case you're interested. But spaghetti squash is that bright yellow squash, and it kind of comes apart in strands like spaghetti, and a lot of people use it as like a pasta substitute. So that's also considered a winter squash. The squashes we won't be talking about today are things like our summer squash, like our zucchini or that yellow squash that... We kind of just got over that big summer squash hump and now we're we're walking into winter squash season which is which is really exciting um, so those are some of the different types of squashes for the most part these guys are all going to be stored the same way in a cool dark place so maybe 50 60 degrees if you can but they don't need to be kept refrigerated so you're going to store them unwashed not in a bag just like this cool dark place the longer you let them set, the more starches are going to convert into sugar. So an older squash might have a little bit more of a sweeter taste. But once you get these home and you store them properly, they'll be good at least for a month, if not two or three months. But the longer you store them, they will kind of have a little bit more sweetness as that starch converts to sugar. So the, guy, the ones that we're talking about here today are actually all interchangeable. And you can also sub them in for that pumpkin pie pumpkin or pumpkin pie, um, the pumpkin that you would use for pie. Um, you can sub them in also to use for pies. A lot of times people won't even notice a difference. So if you're trying to make a homemade pie and it's calling for a fresh pumpkin, definitely feel free to grab a butternut or an acorn squash and sub it in those recipes. Um, once you have gotten them out of storage, let's say you want to go ahead and use one, um, See which one we should cut up first. These are all rinsed off and all ready to clean. So this guy unwashed and not cut is going to be good for several months. When we go to use it we just want to make sure we rinse it off and then we want to cut off the end. So this acorn squash here or also would be similar to like a, a celebration squash um, is really great roasted but it's commonly used also to like stuff to cut off these ends. If for some reason I was prepping squash and had cut off the ends and kind of exposed that inner flesh, I could store it in a bag in my refrigerator if I wasn't going to eat it right now for some reason, and it would be good for five to seven days. So for some reason, if you're doing some prep and you want to prep ahead, um, you can definitely do that. So this is our acorn squash. All the squashes, to some extent, are going to have some seeds in them, so we want to make sure that we remove those seeds. Those are also edible. I just cut the ends off. When you're cutting squash, you want to make sure that you use a sharp knife. Um, they're kind of hard to cut through. If you don't have a good chef's knife or if you are nervous about cutting through that hard outer core, 
You can also microwave them for a few minutes or preheat them in the oven for a few minutes, and that'll kind of soften, soften up the outer pieces and allow you to cut through it a little bit more safely if you're nervous about that. So these guys are full of seeds in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. We have a really great guide to the different types of winter squashes that I will also post in the comments, along with our winter squash ebook. So if you want all the tips and tricks for how to cook these, the temperatures, the recipes, make sure you check back after I'm done with this video and I will post those. So I'm gonna just kind of throw the seeds from these guys in a bowl and we'll talk about roasting those just like we would pumpkin seeds when we're done. A lot of the squashes, the outer skin is not edible. The two squashes that tend to have more of an edible skin once they're cooked are the egg corn and the delicata, this guy that I have over here. So people a lot of times will peel them and get rid of the skin or cook them first and get rid of the skin, but you don't have to with these two varieties. So these allow, the egg corn squash or celebration are really gonna allow for a good hollow opening if you wanted to stuff, stuff a squash. So today I actually cooked one of the egg corn squashes in the crock pot. So when you're cooking the squashes, you can roast them, you can boil them, you can microwave them, you can cook them in a crock pot or in an instant pot if you have a pressure cooker. There's different reasons why you might want to do some of those other ones, but if we're going to stuff a squash, we obviously want to keep it whole like this. So our options are going to be either to roast it at like 400 for probably 40 minutes, or we could also throw it in the crock pot for a little bit on high with a little bit of water. And that's what I actually did today. So I'm going to pull these out, they're still kind of hot here, and I put maybe a half an inch of water at the bottom of the crock pot and then I let it cook on high for probably a couple hours. And you can see that now, now these are really, really soft and they scoop out just like a potato or like a sweet potato would. So now that I have those cooked, if I wanted to stuff them, and sometimes when you're cooking the squash to stuff it, you don't even have to cook it all the way because it's going to cook a little bit more in the oven. I'm going to make like a quick filling to go into this squash. Um, I actually have some, some meat that I already, already kind of browned here. I'm going to let that heat up a little bit while we continue to talk about some of these other squashes. So, the egg corn squash I could roast whole like this if I wanted to. I could also peel it if I was going to um, maybe want cubes. So you could use like a potato peeler. The skin of squash is pretty tough when it's raw. Um, the butternut squash actually peels a lot easier. I've never peeled an egg corn squash, so we're not going to do that. Um, this one will peel a lot easier if you want it peeled. This squash is actually edible once it's cooked, although when I make a stuffed squash like this, I just eat the insides. So the other way to cook the egg corn squash, if we didn't want to roast it whole, would be to cook it in like half moons. So we could slice it like this. And then we could simply roast it on a cookie sheet with some olive oil, salt and pepper, the time is going to decrease when we have smaller pieces like this. So whereas a whole or a half squash like this is going to take 40 minutes, we're probably going to decrease that cook time to 30 minutes, if not less. And we could just roast these on a baking sheet with some salt and pepper or some garlic or even some other vegetables. So we will talk more about roasting those in a minute. Um, all right, so next squash on our list could be this butternut squash, which I feel like is one of the more popular squashes. And we're gonna do the same thing when we go to prep this. We're just gonna rinse it off and we're gonna cut off, cut off the ends. Carefully. Some people like to boil their squash versus roasting it. 
Um, you can also make a soup out of it. So I use squashes sometimes in place of potatoes in soup, so I might cut some up and throw them in a vegetable soup or in a stew. Um, butternut squash is fantastic for that. If you wanted to throw it in a soup dish or a stew, this is when you would probably want to peel it and cube it. And so you can see this one feels a lot easier than that in corn. And I will usually peel this um, before I cut it in half. You always want to try when you're working with squashes to have them in manageable, manageable pieces. So um, I'm going to peel half this. So if you boil this in pieces to cook it and then you drain the water, you're going to lose a lot of the nutrients that way. Whenever we boil something, we're going to lose some of the water-soluble nutrients. So if we're going to put it in a soup, that's going to be okay because the soup broth is going to obviously get all those water-soluble nutrients. But if we're just going to boil it to cook it, then we might want to consider roasting it because we're going to retain some more of the vitamins and minerals in the squash. So the seeds are down here at this end, so we're still gonna have to take those out, but this is all peeled. Um, so then I would just go ahead and cut this into smaller pieces, cut it in half. actually going to just roast a variety of squashes here as we go. So I've got these pieces of cubes of butternut squash so you can definitely cube it if you want. If you're roasting a variety of vegetables like some other sweet potatoes or some other squashes this is probably going to be the way to go. If you like to it in cubes. The other option when we're talking about butternut squash is to slice it in half without peeling it and roast it whole. So I actually did that a little bit ago. So I simply cut it in half. I cut the ends off, cut it in half. I took those seeds out and I just roasted it um, flush side down on some parchment paper for probably 35 to 40 minutes at 400. And you can see that then this gets nice and soft, just like our egg corn, just like a sweet potato. This actually tastes similar to a sweet potato, except not as sweet. Um, so you've got a few different options as far as cooking your butternut goes. You could roast it whole like this, scoop it out, and serve it more like a mashed potato. Or you can serve it cube like this, like you would cut up potatoes or something. We're going to use this in a second. All right, so I have this meat kind of cooking for our stuffed squash dish, and I'm going to throw I'm going to throw some peppers in there. The other thing I'm going to throw in there because we got it in our box this week are some cauliflower greens. Um, they look like this. They're pretty big. And you use them just like you would chard or even like I would use um, like broccoli greens or maybe some kale. So something that I do to kind of sneak some greens into my family's diet, I just remove the, the stem there, um, is I chop up greens really finely and I add them to things like this. So stuffed squash obviously is probably not going to call for cauliflower greens or broccoli greens or kale but I find that if I just dice them up finely, my family probably thinks they're like parsley or something. Um, and I pretty much add them to soups, stews, casseroles, dishes like this. And these are loaded with nutrients. They are dark green rich color. So you can see I just chopped it up super fine. And I'm also gonna add that in here. The ground turkey that I used today actually has um, some taco seasoning on it, so you could kind of make a taco or Mexican themed stuffed squash. Some people do more of like a tomato parmesan based one. 
So I'm gonna let this cook a little bit more. I'm gonna add in some tomatoes and we're gonna go ahead and stuff that, stuff that squash. I've got my oven preheating. Add a little bit of salt. The spaghetti squash that is not technically on this tutorial today, but like I said, I'll post that link. Also is a really great stuffing squash. So look at stuffing squash with your egg corn, your celebration, your spaghetti squash. This is pretty warm here. So I have my kind of squash bowls like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill those up. This is actually not that hot yet. Black beans would also good, go really well in this. I could top it with some cheese right before it's finished cooking. container here before I cook them. So you can see that's going to be a pretty, pretty colorful veggie loaded bowl here. And we're just kind of using that acorn squash as a container. So I'm going to bake these to kind of let all the flavors marinate, maybe for 15 minutes or so since everything in there is actually already cooked, just to kind of warm it up. So using my crock pot was kind of a, a time saver there where I didn't have to have my oven on for a little while. So that's one easy thing you can do with squash is stuff it. Um, these delicata squashes here are a little bit different. Pretty common in some CSA boxes, although I haven't seen them in a lot of veggie or a lot of um, grocery stores. But this is a really, I call it a fuss free squash. You definitely don't have to remove this outer skin at all with these delicata squashes. It gets super tender. Um, I throw these in soups a lot because I feel like they're pretty easy to prep and use. So you still cut off the ends. You cut this in half carefully. And one second, my dog is kind of barking. I know, bud, there's probably someone here. Um, so these delicata squashes still have the inner seeds here. So I'm going to put those in my bowl to roast later. Some people like to uh, stuff these squashes. They cook a little bit faster because they're not as large as some of the other squashes. So if you're looking to save some time. But my favorite way to eat these is actually to take the seeds out and chop them into half moons and roast them just with some oil, salt, and pepper. They roast fairly quickly. Sometimes I'll top them with some Parmesan right at the end. Just making sure no one has any questions. my cubed butternut squash down here that I peeled. And I'm also going to throw this delicata squash in. I'm going to probably just end up roasting a nice good pan of squash here. I've got those half moons from my acorn squash. Remember the acorn squash, the skin is also edible, although it's a little bit harder. So I'm just going to leave that skin on. If you don't like the skin and you're having trouble peeling it, then I would recommend roasting it whole and scooping out the, the inner flesh like we did for those stuffed squashes. Alright, so we're going to use our standard kind of roasting recipe for this batch of squash here. We are going to put some olive oil. on it, along with some salt and pepper. My salt go. And you could combine
combine this with potatoes. The squash is going to take a little bit longer than some of our other vegetables, let's say like broccoli or something, so you probably want to make sure you put the squash in first when you're roasting them. Um, I'm just going to stir this up. And since they're kind of all about the same size, as far as the pieces go, we should be okay here. So I am going to throw this on this pan, this baking sheet, and try to make sure they're kind of spread apart evenly here. If they're too crowded when you're roasting veggies, um, they can end up steaming and not getting that nice roasted flavor. So you want to not have them too crowded. So that's it, a bunch of cut up squash. I'm gonna throw it in my oven for probably 40 minutes. I'm gonna check on it maybe after 20, give it a little stir. I've just got olive oil, salt, and pepper on there. This is a great plate of what, or a great pan of what I'm gonna call healthy carbohydrates. So that is one of my favorite things about squashes is that they have a decent amount of carbohydrates, but they're super nutrient dense versus carbs coming from things like sugary items or even like pastas or bread. So I like to think of squashes of carbohydrate containing foods that really contain vitamins and minerals that are going to make a lot of deposits into my nutrient savings account. So I'm a big fan of people using squashes if they, if they can or if they like them in place sometimes of all the pasta or bread that we might be eating. The vitamin and mineral content is much higher. It's a much more colorful food. So overall it's going to be a healthier choice. So let's go back to our butternut squash really quick. Let's say we didn't want to cube it or peel it. We could do the same thing. We could, as we did with the delicata, we could cut it in half. We could remove these seeds here. Get more of a big piece. And if you have a lot of squash, if you are able to get them from your farmer's market this fall, and kind of want to prep them ahead, just roasting them whole and scooping out the inner flesh is going to be a pretty easy way to prep a bunch at one time, and we'll talk about how to save it. So if you wanted to cook it like this, you would cook it flush side down, um, just like I did with this guy. If you use a piece of parchment paper or aluminum foil, I'll show you sometimes you get um, it tends to dry out a little bit more, which is fine. I don't mind that. The other option is you can also put a little bit of water in the bottom of your pan in place of parchment paper, and that will allow the squash to steam a little bit more versus roast. So it'll be a little bit softer, um, and it won't have that like crispier edge to it. So just a couple different thoughts when you, when you go to roast squash. So let's say we've got all these cooked. Um, and let's say we had a great deal, we're trying to preserve them for the winter. Freezing squash is actually really easy. So I would roast my squash or cook it in cubes, however you want to use it or cook it. And we actually just scoop it out, throw it in a freezer safe bag, and we're good to go. We can throw that bag in the freezer. So I use smaller ones thinking that I'm going to pull that much out if I were to freeze all of it in one big bag, obviously. I have to use all that up at one time. So I'm just going to open up this bag. And scoop it into here. Um, so over the winter, if you needed a fast, easy veggie, you could pull out this bag, thaw it up, heat it up, and you'd have fast, easy squash. Mashed squash, for that matter. My favorite thing to do with frozen butternut squash is to actually add it to chili in the winter time. So we have come to love butternut squash in our chili and we actually, I view it as like an essential ingredient when I make chili. So I will make my chili with my meat or beans, tomatoes, however you make chili. And then I add the butternut squash towards the end once everything's cooked. I will make sure it's mashed up like this, but it makes for a really thick, delicious chili, not to mention I'm adding a ton of good phytochemicals and nutrients to something that might otherwise not have them, or have as many. So I'm a big fan of adding squash to chili. 
So that's all you have to do to freeze it. You roast your squash, you squeeze out the air. I'm going to label it and I'm good to go. That can go in my freezer. It's going to be good for 8 to 12 months. So great thing to kind of visit your farmer's market and load up, up, load up on some squashes uh, for the winter time. You can use this method with any of the squashes, any of the winter squashes, except for spaghetti squash. We can't pull it off that easily with spaghetti squash. Um, all right, so we talked about preserving, we talked about freezing. The other thing I wanna make sure that we talk about is roasting the seeds. Um, so you actually can roast the seeds just like you would pumpkin seeds. So when you scoop them out of your squash, you are going to want to kind of get them out of the, the actual flesh. You're gonna get them all out and then you're gonna let them soak in some water. And you're gonna just rinse them off really well. And then after you rinse them off, you're gonna dry them with a towel, which is what I've done to these guys here. So you can see I've kind of cleaned these up just in some water. And I am going to use, use this sheet here. Actually, I'm not gonna use one with parchment paper on it. I'm just gonna use a, um, a plain, baking sheet here and I'm actually just going to put a little bit of oil on it and I like being able to roast the seeds because it's going to be a good healthy snack um, that you can kind of flavor, flavor yourself. I'm going to put these on here to show you guys um, but I'm not going to quite put them in the oven yet because I want to make sure I get the rest of these seeds from the ones we just used. So. Salt and pepper, or even just sea salt, is probably the most common thing to put on the seeds when you roast them. Um, but you can also you can also add things like turmeric or cumin or garlic powder or cayenne. So you can definitely roast these with a little bit of other flavors. I'm going to add some garlic powder, which I normally don't use because it's not nearly as good as fresh garlic, but I'm just going to kind of mix these up. I kind of want to add some cayenne too. Um, so like I said, I'm going to make sure that I get these other seeds from this before I go ahead and roast this, but once I'm ready, I'm going to roast these seeds at 30 minutes, uh, for 30 minutes at 300 degrees. Um, and I probably will stir them a little bit about halfway through. And once I notice that they're dried out and pretty country, crunchy, they're going to be good to go. And that's a fun, easy snack. If you have kids, having them try to get all the seeds out of these um, can be a good little, a good little activity um, and a good way to get them involved in some good, healthy food prep. So that is, um, as far as cooking squash, the basics. Um, so you can roast it whole or you can cut it into pieces and roast it. You can also microwave it or boil it. The directions for both of those are also going to be found in our ebook. Um, once you have it cooked, you can add it to soups or stews. You can also add it raw to soups and allow it to cook in the broth. Some people will just enjoy it as a simple side dish, like this cooked delicata one that I have here. Um, I cook this just skin side down. You can see it browned up a little bit. And I would just simply add some butter, some salt and pepper to this and have it as kind of a side. People make dips with them. You can make pumpkin pie with any of these squashes in place of the pumpkin. So just keep that in mind. If you have a recipe that calls for some sort of squash or you were thinking you wanted some squash, you can definitely use these guys interchangeably. So I will make sure that I post the link to our winter squash ebook in addition to our guide to the different winter squashes and what they taste like and how to use them and our spaghetti squash tutorial. So thank you so much for joining us today. This is Katie, the CSA coach with Shared Legacy Farms, and I hope you guys have a great day.